Yes, sir. All right. Fingers crossed. They changed everything recently, so it's just been an absolute. Yeah, mess YouTube, for is, us. YouTube is not not very friendly to. And I, I believe we're live. It's your live, yeah. Yeah, oh, fantastic. <laughs> so here we are. Booyaka. Uh, uh, does anybody have the chat up? That would be. That I do. Would be yeah. Miracle. Adam, my man. Yes. Breeze toast. Rudy Say hello to the chat. Let's do our regular thing, and then uh, and then we'll into it and talk to our lovely guests. Wait, uh, let's wait a couple minutes. There's only oh, four in here now, and that's, that's probably because, most yeah, of us. We don't have the yeah. opening. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. That gives me time to bring the chat up. What's up, Rudy? Thanks for joining. Um, I, I need to ask, uh, Dr. Glover, can you please say your first name so that we can get the pronunciation? Oh, that'd be fantastic. Oh, my God. <laughs> Marewa. 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 Okay. All right. Beautiful. I was, yeah. That's a beautiful no, name, I was way off. <laughs> <laughs> was way we had off. three different ways to say it. We were like, yeah. okay, which one are we going to go with? <laughs> kind of how we do it. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining in. Awesome. Hi. I'm just going to wait, wait a couple minutes, say what's up to everybody, and then uh, we'll get started. Um, and I will pass it over to Three Stones and you can yeah, orchestrate. Ab absolutely. Uh, well, uh, yeah. Well, uh, Marewa, thank you very much for, for, for giving up your time for it. us today. You nailed it. Yeah. It's hard, it's, hard, it's hard with this dental plate in all of my It's very hard to say. <laughs> uh, we certainly thank you very much uh, for, for giving up your time today. And, uh, uh, you know, with our potato computer skills. Um, we are not good at this. We are not <laughs> at all, but I'm wearing a tie. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> I am not. Oh, you are? I kind of wearing horns. That's awesome. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, I, I got to keep it kind of, you know, monochrome for my boy Domino. So. <laughs> oh. <laughs> awesome. Well, we thank you all for joining us. Well, and uh, obviously, uh, Dr. Glover is here, you know, for the discussion that we wanted to talk about. Uh, advocacy and the scene in New, uh, New Zealand and, you know, how that relates to, to different parts of the world. Um, can we ask, firstly, you're not a medical doctor, is that right? You're a doctor of... A behavioural scientist. So I studied psychology and then community psychology, yeah, and uh, yeah. Yeah, behavioural science. Okay, awesome. I, I did a little bit of a Twitter stalking to, to see some of the, <laughs> you, you, you've traveled a lot recently in the last few years, uh, you know, particularly with this, this situation, you know, would you like to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, it's been amazing really to start, you know, working at a more international level and being called upon to speak at tobacco harm reduction conferences in Spain and Manila. And uh, I'm going to be going to New York soon and there's just so much concern. I mean, a lot of these conferences are led by vapors, led by vaping advocacy organizations or are happening due to the call from vapors for help. Um, as, you know, health professionals, academics and politicians are trying to slam the door on this, you know, life-saving Potentially life-saving technology. Yeah, exactly. The the call that's pretty. Isn't it? <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> um, uh, I wanted to ask uh, uh, like a couple of the questions that we've we've uh, been sent in, you know, um, and because everyone is in a different situation in different parts of the world with the way uh, vaping is being, you know, legislated or regulated or you know total bans. Um, I wanted to start on that po on a positive note. And that question, uh, like the early days of the, the New Zealand government and and the situation happening there, you know, the the triggers or signs that the, you know the government was looking at that as at a positive situation for harm reduction. You know, could you tell us about that and like what's what was happening in those days? That's a really interesting question. Uh, my first global forum on nicotine conference that I went to in 2015, I came back and I met with the Ministry of Health team that, you know, looks at tobacco control policy and 
and gave them a presentation on everything that I'd learned and the, just the whole uh, global sort of future of tobacco, of nicotine is changing, is changed. And so I really went there to just sort of give them the update. And at that time, the person who was managing that team was very skeptical and against uh, e-cigarettes and vaping. Uh, really what happened was there was a change of management. They often change turnover. people around. Turnover can be good, turnover can be turnover bad. Turnover can be, <laughs> yes, that's right. All, and, all bad. All yeah. Bad. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we were lucky. We uh, The next person who came in to manage that tobacco control team was very open to looking at the evidence and uh, and that's what they've really focused on is what does the evidence say and trying to base the policy uh, policies that they're recommending to government on that. So, you know, I've got a lot of faith in the team that's in the Ministry of Health. Unfor unfortunately, <clears throat> outside of the Ministry of Health, there are some very strong uh, anti-vaping advocates, academics, um, some of those usual health organizations that are anti-vaping in other countries as well. And mm. they uh, continue to lobby the government. So we had a, a national sort of center to right government before, and then we had an election. And now we have a center to left government who were supposed to be the ones that will look after the poor and and the laborers and the workforce and 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 do more for equity and reducing inequities um, but unfortunately the um, we got a whole lot of new MPs in power and they've been very very vulnerable to the lobbying efforts from the prohibitionists and the anti-vaping uh, adv advocacy groups yeah. So again, it was like, uh oh, this way it went the the other way. That and uh, and so they've been backpedaling, and you know, I, I don't blame them. They're really, really being misled. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I mean, you know, a lot of these people, their um, their career is politicking. Yeah. When you, when you have when you have subjects <laughs> like this that are very multi layered and very uh, multi faceted and, and take a lot of actual research to understand the full scope of what's happening and the full ramifications of what could happen based on what they do. Frozen. Frozen. <laughs> yep. Yeah. He was really into it there. I know that was like halfway through. <laughs> Chuck, Chuck I felt like that was going to be gold right there. We just missed gold. <laughs> Right there. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure Gold. he'd be cuss cussing at Gone. the screen right now. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but th well, that situation that you were saying, you know, uh, was it was almost like a, a full circle. You, you've had acceptance and then right. now, the, you know, the lobbying is coming back to trying to control it more or trying to take away the, 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 the or I guess it's almost a liberty situation now, isn't it? it it's just an ongoing really wow. heated and controversial debate and uh yeah i'm i am thankful that i am in new zealand because i do see what's going on and i'm really sorry for you guys it's um i i hope that we can do the right thing here in new zealand and then that will be a model for other countries uh it, it at least is going to raise questions about like come on, Australia, what are you doing? Um, yeah. You're the only Western nation that's taking this really draconian and uncalled for um, <laughs> pro prohibitionist stance Absolutely. on vaping. So the, yeah, unfortunately, um, you know, you, you get new MPs, you get a new government. They haven't been in power for nine years. The previous government was in for a long time. And wow. they want to get in again. So they're, they're going to be very careful. And people, the public, those uh, lobbyists know that they can use that to, you know, pull the levers there. 
um, you do this or else. And to, to paint them as, come on, you've got to put your stamp on it. Uh, but they, the new Associate Minister of Health, for instance, this, this was is such a hot topic and mm. a heated debate that she must have got one of her staff members or was provided with a list of pro-vaping tweeters and she had them all blocked. So we're just yeah. blocked on mass. This is an MP, a government MP, and we can't see her communications uh, and we can't communicate with her. I mean, I think that's abs that's shocking. Um, yeah. they're, they're there for the people, they're a member of parliament and just blocking out one whole side of the debate and not having anything to do with them. Um, yeah. And it's similar when you try to get to have meetings with them or they recently held like a select committee and now I know what the word select means. It means they're going to select <laughs> certain people to come and present to them and Absolutely. anyone else that they don't really want to hear from is not invited. So there's a whole lot of real, um, it's, it's kind of corrupt really. Um, hmm. The government should be listening to all views. I used to be a government policy analyst. We used to have to listen to both sides and give the ministers that, okay, this is the balance of, you know, the range of views and identify risks for them. And this present government are definitely not doing that. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's, that's fantastic. And, but that also segues to an interesting point. I know that we asked you your name and, and what, your, what your PhD is in, but how about a little bit of background on what you, because as you mentioned, you said you used to do some policy stuff for, for government. And, I didn't know that, obviously. It'd be nice to maybe just maybe give us a little bit of your history because, you know, some of us, us goofy Americans aren't, aren't too dialed into what's going on everywhere else. All right. Yeah, well, um, it was 25 years ago and I'd just done my master's on uh, in community psychology, uh, which is a different, it's really looking at community development. It's really... Um, yeah, it's, it looks at policy analysis. It looks at working with community groups and and helping them, you know, lobby, do advocacy uh, and that sort of stuff. So I thought, well, if I really want to understand about how to do advocacy and how government works, I should go work there and learn. So, yeah. Kind of yeah. Yep. So I went and uh, I worked for, we had a public health commission at that time. And that was my start in public health here in New Zealand. It's also when I started working on tobacco control. So I, I worked on some other issues too, but tobacco control is the one that I've stuck with because it's the biggest killer of our Maori indigenous people here in New Zealand. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. and it's largely preventable. You know, not everybody is going to quit smoking, but, but you know, we can probably get, actually, there's no research to indicate how low we can go. Um, there's been some indication here in a 2006 national survey, even 3% of medical doctors and 3% of church ministers still smoked. So this is where our 5% aspirational goal came from. Yep. If, if, you know, 3% of medical doctors still smoke, well, zero is probably not realistic. Yeah, you, 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 gotta, you gotta set that bar to an attainable level. You can't, yeah, you can't just swing for the fence every time. <laughs> Yeah, well, unfortunately, in New Zealand, the whole uh, the whole trying to mislead the public about what is an attainable level is, yeah, they're using that, they're changing it to zero, we're going to get to zero, we're going to be smoke free New Zealand, and nobody's going to smoke. I mean, that's just not realistic. And yeah, that's rough, man. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You have to start worrying <laughs> about, well, okay, what's going to happen to the people who don't stop smoking then? Yeah. Um, they get shipped to Australia. What about, yeah. Their, <laughs> yeah. what about their freedoms, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. How about that? And, and, you know, that's, that's the thing, too, is, is we talk a lot of time, there's people like, like me that, that are kind of dialed into to, to, to what's going on here in the States or whatever. And, and I, I, I know a little bit about Australia, you know, because I've done some time talking to people like Paul, uh, Labyrinth, Blamier, 
and Bogan and, and Adam and, and uh, his wife. But I get real wrapped up in New Zealand. Like New Zealand is Shangri-La. Like this is this is the land of vaping. This is what we all aspire to be. But it's like you have to understand that you are fighting for this this is something that it didn't just come mm. and, you know th that's something that gets lost i think a lot is that people are just like oh well new zealand yeah that's the place but it's like it took people like you to make it the place and to continue it it to stay on that level because i mean i've heard some things lately that 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 you get a little bit of a little bit of back push now things things are starting to maybe come back the other way and you're and it's just it's going to turn into more of a uh, you know a, a contentious situation you know yeah and and what's happening in the states is not happening is not helping us uh no. definitely you know the whole all of the lies about jewel and the the alarmist rubbish about you know the uptake in teens and and everything that is definitely not helping us and the anti-vaping prohibitionist lobby here they go and scare the minister of health with stories straight out of the states and you know we didn't even have jewel we didn't even have yeah. knockoff jewel products yeah. in new zealand and they're like oh the kids are going to start jeweling and you, you know can't even, you can't even have a pod system because i mean <laughs> an enclosed pod system because you can't i mean what would be the point you know if you can't have nicotine already in place i mean they're not going to sell you know yeah so it's uh you know that it's a real worry what's happening there and how the stories there and that huge sort of anti uh, vaping and prohibitionist movement that you have is impacting on us so we're definitely getting pushback and unfortunately this government uh, going the punitive way um, and it is the poor people it's their constituents that will suffer the most yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah right it's like fact, um, it's like that that i think it was one of your more recent articles uh about the um i think it was the the proposition of no smoking or vaping in the car for if you yeah. have a minor in the car with you mm -hmm. yeah, yeah i thought that was very very interesting stance that's, that's interesting that. i've never heard that I, I i didn't i didn't see that that's that's wow yeah um that's a new I, one to I me. looked at some of the comments on that article as well. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. So, was this a little, a little sideways? Get a little sideways yeah, well, a little fast? This, yeah, this guy, he like completely, he drew all these connections that Dr. Glover was making, which she was not, clearly. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then somebody came right behind him and just said, so that was nice. Uh, which you don't always get that, you know. That's good. You don't always That's get good. somebody defending defending it in the, in the comments. But yeah, uh, I thought yeah. that was interesting. Not on the I, internet, you know. <laughs> I was really, I was really, uh, my attention was caught from the title of that article too. So. Uh, oh, that's good. good. Job. Yeah, that's good. It's, uh, it's. <laughs> there's so much wrong with it, and. There are just so many little laws and rules and lots of little ways that that the um, lower socioeconomic groups here in New Zealand or the indigenous Maori, Pacific Islanders, people who, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis experience everyday racism and discrimination based on their race or their religion, yeah. um, particularly if you're Muslim. And you know, so th there are so many ways in which th those groups are being marginalized and oppressed in our society. And that's, they're the groups with the highest smoking rates as well. So okay, that's, that's I, I just get, yeah, yeah, across the board in other countries as well. Yeah. And it, it just sort of does my head in that they pick something out in isolation from all of these other things that are happening. You know, the right. price of everything is going up. It's not just, mm when they yeah. consider doing a tobacco tax rise, you know, on the other hand, the rents are going up as well. The power's going up. Then they go and put in a regional petrol tax. You know, people are hurting. And, yeah, yeah. and with my uh, background training in psychology, you know, and also studying uh, smoking cessation and being an expert in nicotine addiction, smoking addiction, 
you know, the biggest driver of relapse is negative emotion, is stress. And so right. here we are, yeah, here we are lumping more and more and more stress on the poorest uh, people in our society. And at the same time going like, you got to quit smoking. Absolutely. And if you don't quit smoking, we catch you smoking in this place or that place or in the town square or in your car or even vaping. We're, now we're going to find you. We've never fined right. smokers in New Zealand. We've never done that. And that's a real mm. shift in Yeah. I mean, because that's culture. true. That's absolutely, I mean, that is such an amazing point. Is the fact that if, you, if the cost of living is going up on everything that you, I mean, you can't go to the grocery store without, without paying more. You can't pay your rent without more. Your utilities, everything is going up. And as your stress, all of a sudden, like you said, stress is the biggest indicator towards relapse. You know what I mean? Whether it's whether it's nicotine, whether it's drugs, whether it's alcohol, and, mm. and those are all things that, that are issues when it comes to indigenous people anywhere. It, it's been an issue with American Indians here. It's been an issue with the Aborigine in Australia. It's an issue with the yeah. Maori. And so, like, but I mean, it's a, it's a much broader issue, but it seems to it seems to hit those communities much harder. You know, so I mean, yeah, that's that's a great point. Yeah. Well, even uh, and, my, my mother works in the uh, disability services yeah. here in Australia and exactly. the percentage of, you know, people, uh, people with disabilities who are smokers as well. It's pretty heavy statistics. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, know. mental mental health as well. I mean, people yep. with schizophrenia, you know, I do just wonder, you know, people just are people they don't understand. They don't understand how smoking works and what mm. benefits people are getting from it, especially if they do have depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, you know, there's a number of uh, disorders that smoking is being used by people for the functions, for a particular function. And we need to understand that. We, uh, But no, yeah. it's just all gone. We used to be like that here 25 years ago. It was about let's focus on reducing disease, smoking-related diseases, and smoking related you know premature deaths and the other one you know preventing uptake um and it and it yeah so that used to yeah. be the focus absolutely and, and there was and there was there was a lot of study done and a lot of people working on on the mechanisms behind it and, and what causes it like the actual reasons behind why these things are happening but it yeah. seems like now all that's gone i mean it's not gone but it's it, it's too much of headlines and epidemics and and lobbyists and this and that nobody cares about the real health aspects they they, they just want to get the headline well know, yeah which, well which... yeah sorry we're moving into kind of a a new realm of public health a new kind of strategy which we could call say policing public health so <laughs> Because, yeah. uh, you know, a whole lot of the health education hasn't worked fast enough and mm -hmm. banning uh, smoking in certain areas, which has been, you know, probably the, the biggest, uh, most effective thing to reduce smoking in New Zealand was the no smoking inside workplaces and smoke-free bans. Yeah. Um, but it hasn't been fast enough and... No. And it hasn't been good enough. And uh, um, I think that, you know, an incredible lot of frustration has driven people working in tobacco control to become just, well, you just got to get harder on them. You just got to slam them. And of course, that's based on sort of faulty psych theories, you know, right. about. Yeah, let's, if let's, you, let's let's even taxes. That nail's not going through. Let's get a bigger down. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's not let's not invent a new tool. Let's just get the sledge. Let's do that. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Bash them harder. Bash them harder. Eventually they will submit. Eventually they will do what you're telling them to do. But you know, there's always people in society who will. That's going to, if anything, uh, they're going to not just reject that, but they're going to actively resist that. Yeah. And yeah, you for human beings. You know, that's the way we are. Right. Yeah. I don't really, really I don't really good. understand uh, I don't really understand all this push in every country against vaping or against smoking on the basis of you know concern for public health right I just don't understand that platform and the reason I don't understand that platform is because 
you want to stop people from smoking to make them more healthy, then why are they polluting the earth and all the crops that are grown with pesticides that are cancer causing pesticides that are getting into the food. And they're also doing that to the meat farms, right? They're putting all this stuff in there to make us more sick. And this is me getting on my old conspiracy soapbox. So I apologize if I'm dropping too much on you on this show, but this is (laughs) kind of what I do. This is kind of what I do, but I I don't, I don't understand the concern for public health when you're behind the scenes doing all this stuff with our food supply, which hits everyone, not just a smoker or a drinker or this, which is, you know, which is a small, in the, in the right? Scheme of things, everybody has population. to eat. Yeah. Everybody has to eat, right? So it's just, I don't, I think it's, it, it's, it's all. It, well, it's, 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 we it's, it's, it really I is, understand. for I, lack of a better word. I understand the question, it's but just yeah. ridiculous. Well, um, you know? public health, global public health, has become an industry in itself. So, I mean, originally it was about clean water, sure. you know, uh, making sure that um, food joints were not poisoning people, and you know, making sure there was clean toilets, and you know. The basics. Originally, it was that. Now it's a huge industry. It's um, well funded, and you know it's a big machine. So we're dealing with that as well. The other thing that I'm, you know, is a particular sort of concern for me is the. Uh, and that was where I get on my soapbox. You oh, know the wow. whole. <laughs> everybody, gets, everybody gets soapbox time. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, I'm the, taking a number. Yeah. <laughs> um, the Western Eurocentric way of viewing the world and saying we're all the same, but also just how everything is reduced down to one thing at a time. So, you know, so this group over here do smoking and there's another group over there do alcohol and this other group over here do environment and and those ones over there do, you know, road crashes or whatever. That's how how government gets huge. Yeah, yeah. And that's that not compartmentalizing. <laughs> compartmentalizing, reducing. And and you lose the whole picture. You don't see the system. And uh and that that's not really the way that many indigenous people view things. So no, yeah. you know, we understand you need to see it holistically. You need to understand there's lots of things going in and on in somebody's life. It is what's happening in the environment. It is what's happening in their farm family. It is um, you know, it is their diet. It's all of those things. And so I think there is a lot more research coming out of that Western Eurocentric academia. Uh, you know, they start talking about systems thinking or mm-hmm. bioecological models or, you know, oh, and we're, kind of yeah, I, and indigenous, yeah. indigenous <laughs> people are like, uh, warm and fuzzy. yeah, warm and yeah, fuzzy. Those people like, are like, yeah, that's like, a lot of, that's a lot of, <laughs> how about you just tell me how to get healthy? We, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, eat this, lab grown uh, meat. That's how you get healthy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, the, not um, not good. And of course, we're back to politics. Uh, New Zealand is not a huge country. Uh, I think we're very well off, you know, when I get to travel to, I just went to India. Um, you know, we're a very, very rich country, but we still have a limited amount of money. Every government has a limited amount of money to spend. And this is where priorities come in. And this is where the politicking comes in. And everybody's going to go and push for their particular uh, agenda and their particular want and need. And it's a it's a big fight, you know, whether or not is tobacco control going to get this much money and, oh, and then alcohol feel like they're the poor cousins and obesity's like, well, you know, well, we'll just redo the stats and we'll move the goalposts, and and yeah. if we if we count high blood pressure, um, weight, uh, cardiovascular, we'll count all of those as a cause of obesity. Then we win, and we become the top killer, you know. And then oh, we yeah. get more money. So Absolutely. it's a big system. It's both the political system, but all of, also this huge public health industry. That it, um, it almost feels like they're that like the last thing you just said is so right. It almost like they're they're not competing to 
to bring about a, a change or a solution. They're competing to bring about the most noteworthy thing that's going to get them their funding for the next thing that they can think about. Oh, Without, yeah, that's people worrying jokes, about the solution right? to their original issue. They're just like, oh, bam, we got paid. Let's move. <laughs> yeah. you know what well, I mean? it's people's, you know, trying to keep their jobs. It's, it's yeah, it's well, no, a yeah, it's stuff. human nature. I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily say that. Like, oh, mm, it's the yeah, way the world. I, I mean, children, we understand how this stuff works, but it's well, it's well, it, you know, it, it's supposed to go like you get more money for your issue for, um, you know, tobacco or alcohol or gambling or whatever it is. You get more money, and then you can do more to reduce the incidence of disease and death. Uh, but, you know, in tobacco control, that reduction of death and disease is, um, we, we don't agree on the strategy anymore. So um, somewhere along the, over the last 25 years, the group that were arguing like, oh, look, look, what you wanna do, that's just too slow. I know, let's just get rid of the industry. Let's destroy the companies. That's what we need to do. And there's a whole huge range of strategies being used to destroy the companies. You know, like let's get people to pull their investments. Don't invest in these evil companies, whether it's alcohol, gambling, you know, tobacco. And of course it could be McDonald's and then it's gonna be sugar. sugar. Um, you know, so that will just go on. McDonald's, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's a particular strategy and they uh, have become dominant in tobacco control and the people who are like more people focused, let's help people, let's build their capacity to get out of the stress and situation they're in, let's provide them with cessation support, how to change behavior, they're, they've lost. You know. Uh if I can interrupt, that's actually one of the questions that we had, you know, like obviously you're you're, you know, associating with professionals all over the world and, and you know, on a day-to-day, -day, second by second basis, basically, is like what's happening in our world right now with this, this subject, you know, how, how is it that some professionals, medical professionals or, you know, uh, industry professionals are, are able to, you know, push the narrative of advocacy so easily and, and there's so many that don't yet, you know, how do we get the message to, to more doctors, more health professionals ding, ding. yeah it's uh it's a real problem when we have medical doctors and professors who are not medical doctors uh putting out actually running studies deliberately running studies to create uh -huh. negative evidence uh, mm -hmm. to create evidence to prove, they say, that proves that this product or this new thing is dangerous. And so they, uh, the media love that and they grab on it and that's getting out to medical doctors. Yep. So a lot of medical uh, doctors and health professionals as they're hearing, whoa, we've got, we got those people saying this is a harm reduced, you know, risk reduced product and look at all these people quitting and moving over to risk reduced products. And some doctors who work with actual people, they see the benefits in their patients. They're the yeah. ones that come across. They're the ones that go, hey, there's something here. And the ones who are not actually working with people, um, <laughs> they you know, they're less likely to uh, come across or or they have friends or colleagues. So it's a huge it's, it's network amazing how, world. Yeah, it's amazing how people will relate to someone speaking from actual life experience as opposed to someone speaking from a clinical trial standpoint or the standpoint of someone that that is basically fudging numbers, <laughs> which, which happens quite a bit. Right. Um, and, and 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 it's it's innate in humans to be able to, to to see that to understand when someone's being genuine with you even even if they're trying real hard not to it's pretty easy especially when someone's real smart and articulate and comes across as knowing exactly what they're talking about like you have which is I'm I'm literally I'm just I'm having the best time I I, I love you um, but like you know compared to these. I mean, I, it, it's crazy when I read certain studies that, that come across, especially from 
our government here in America, that you can just you just read it and you can just tell that no one talks to a human at any yeah. point during any of this. At no. any you know what I mean? And it's it's sad, you know, it really is. Yeah. So there's um this problem that we're talking about, which is really about a suppression of science. Uh, it's mm -hmm. not just happening on this issue. Unfortunately, it's happening around food. You know, there's a huge debate going on between should you eat a high carb, low fat diet, low sugar, or low carb, healthy fat. You know, that's as vicious a debate in that sector. Um, so across science, then the climate change, you know, across science, there are these, there's a breakdown in the academy, in the knowledge system, universities, science, and there's a lot of corrupt behavior going on. Mm -hmm. People, because it does seem, for, you know, I've got this theory that, you know, this is the new kind of modern day Colosseum. And for Quiet. some people, this is just a sport you know, they, instead of going out and playing rugby, you know, getting beaten up on the field, oh, you're not allowed to do that anymore anyway. Um, you know, you can't play rough sports anymore. And instead of doing that, they're doing it within these professions, within universities yeah. and within science. In, in academia, yeah. It's, in yeah. academia, it's full, you know. It's a full contact sport. Yeah. A lab coat nowadays. That's yeah. right. And, and <laughs> I, you know. I know. <laughs> It's all about a big buzz for them, you know, like, ah, yeah, I got her there, you know, like, and, right. yeah. and, and so I think Com that competition. it's competition. Yeah, it is. It's totally, it's competition. For some, it's sport. For some, it's about the money. Um, for some, it's about fame and their status and that they want to be known, their legacy. It's about their legacy. They want to be known for that theory or, you know, they want a prize for stopping everybody in Australia from smoking. And yeah. that's what they want on right. their headstone, you know? And it's like, it is like a call scene though. Those guys well, fought to have their name yeah. carried out, out for the ages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and some of these fights, are, it's David and Goliath. And I, I really think uh, vaping is is David. And, Absolutely. You know, it's a, Not yeah. lying. Yeah. <laughs> and Goliath is uh, pretty big. And there's one in every country. Yes, and sir. that Goliath in each country is made up of a, a tightly networked group. They, like, email each other all the time, backstabbing me and anybody who's you know trying to save lives <laughs> trying to get people yeah. access to this trying to um get equitable access for the people who are being most harmed they don't care about that anymore they all they care about is winning against that you know her or well, him or yeah no, to be the devil's advocate as well i mean the same could be said about some you know groups pushing for vaping you know because they have a particular way that they want Absolutely. either their business to succeed or sure. them themselves so right. or, i mean you know yeah uh my wife was looking into it she's just put it in chat this morning we were having a little look see at australian political donations and whatnot you know that, that it's scary i mean it's there for public viewing if you just want to look you know but we were looking this morning at a particular event in the last couple of weeks and my mind is blown that that is, you know, again, common sense is not the prevailing factor here. It's money and it's aspiration and whether it's fame, because exactly like you said, you know, we were the people that got this through or whatever, you know, like, again, so that's, we're looking at it's health, <laughs> human health or basic liberty. That That's the situation. But if you've got the money, then you can get the that particular headline out there. You know, it's really scary. And, no, of course, there are companies. So sorry, yeah. No, go ahead, go ahead. There are huge companies who who are losing here. They're losing ground. You know, tobacco yeah. companies are losing sales. Um, pharma are losing sales of their nicotine replacement products, of their cessation medicines. They put millions and millions of dollars into those products. So it's not just uh, academics who potentially have something to lose whether it's a hit to their ego or their legacy or 
funding because they have to compete with more people uh, yeah. on a topic they don't really understand. But there, you know, it's big pharma and it's tobacco companies. And now also it's vaping companies, you know, and mm -hmm. heated tobacco companies. And, you know, we, we're yeah, going to have right. more products come out. So, yeah, I think we always have to be, uh, we always have to be aware of everybody's conflicts of interest, if you want to call them that. That's exactly every, what they are too. Yeah, yeah, it is. It doesn't matter yeah. whether you're pro or you're anti, everybody's, everybody's, everybody's got, got their reason. Yeah, they've all everybody's got their got reason. That, I mean, that's a word we use today in a very, a very far kind of post for Adam, which I was very happy to see. That's taking my, my standpoint of like, yeah, it's pretty, pretty out of, out of context for me. I'm out of the goody two shoes. <laughs> but it's the truth, you know. But he's, exactly. You're saying, you know, companies are losing money, and I'm sure everyone's got a story like this. I lost my grandfather over it. You know, that's they lose money, we lose, we lose family members. You know, yeah. so it's, you know, it's it's pro proper. You know, uh, again, you know, just to what was Chuck was saying. I live in this little fantasy world where I think that people actually care about other people. And yeah. that whole situation, and if you put out good, you'll get good See, back. Now, but that's so far from the that. diabolical, crazy person. I think that some no, people care about stuff, but I know that a lot. Of yeah. Them. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Won't won't change me. It won't change me. I know. Well, that, that's why I love you. I need you. I need you, Adam. <laughs> Make and of course, <laughs> of course, governments are losing money as well. You know, the um, move to risk reduce products, if they are not taxed, and in, at the moment in New Zealand, we were going the way of we're not going to tax uh, the vaping products so that they we, we maintain that advantage and attractiveness for people to move to those products. But, you know, like Japan, uh, where I've also been recently to study the incredible, incredible, you know, shift from smoked cigarettes to heated tobacco products. Uh, one you know, of the bro. fastest moves from a product to its displacement product in the world ever. And the, the government, Japan Tobacco, who own they own Japan Tobacco and the government, uh, we met with the Minister of Finance. He was totally open about the fact that the tax is for government revenue. And it, <laughs> it was really eye-opening. Um, it's strange, know, isn't it? Have a, have a politician tell you the truth? Yeah. No, well, right. you know, people, oh, yeah, people have said that to me many years here in New Zealand, and I was, I was there. I was part of that policy process in the beginning. You know, when we were, you know, considering taxing tobacco and and a, a program of rises, and I thought, no, it's not about the money. This is about reducing smoking. But you know, I was a lot younger then. But no, Japan, uh, Japan, totally, it's about government revenue. And when they began to see that huge drop, I mean, it was like 22, 23% loss of the uh, sales wow. in the cigarette market wow, that uh, went across to the heated yeah. tobacco products. In 18 months, uh, they were pretty quick to implement a taxation regime uh, to begin increasing the tax they would get from these products. If it continued like that, basically, as the tax went down on smoked tobacco, the tax was going to go up on the heated tobacco products. Yeah. And of course, around the world, we're seeing more and more governments now going, oh, no, we're going to tax these. We're going to, you know, yeah. and, um, and it's all yeah. about revenue. Yeah. But there's still an issue with uh, for e-liquid in Japan that with with nicotine, right? Oh yeah, they don't know. They have some historic law. The no. minister of finance there was incredibly knowledgeable. We couldn't teach him anything. He yeah. he would love to have uh, access for his people to vaping products, but there's this law that um, banned nicotine. You know. And, th and thus means that nicotine and e-liquids is banned there. And he said to change it would take six years and a lot of work. So uh, I think that what Japan Tobacco did with their 
the Plume Tech device, which is actually a a hybrid vaping. You know, it's like it's got e-liquid in it. It's also got tobacco in it, so it's cheeky. Sl- yeah, it's very um, cheeky. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the, you know, people all get that? around the laws, so yeah. What is that? What is uh, that device? It's a it's a plume tech. That has e-liquid. Yeah, it's a that's right. It's a hybrid, um, okay. so it has tobacco in it and also has yeah. e-liquid in it. And you it, it heats the e-liquid, and you're basically pulling that through the vapor through a plug of tobacco. So, um, oh, whoa! Nice. So, yep. so dual, dual use figures that are skyrocketing right. Now. <laughs> right. Dual <use> now, right? <laughs> <laughs> I've been wow. dual using for six years, but I just have one device the whole time. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> There's a huge. Huge range of devices, which also makes it difficult yeah. for governments, you know, like New Zealand, writing new legislation. They've got to make sure that it's going to stand up to, you know, the passage of time and new technologies coming out. You can't sort of write a, you know, type of product into the legislation necessarily. It could it could be redundant in two years. That's the thing, it's man. Like, this, this industry uh, moves so fast. Yeah, it moves very so fast. fast. And there's 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 a new device. Every, okay, well, hmm, that's that's kind of a, a kind of a dual thing. The industry seems to move very very quickly, but there's also a lot of redundancy. The word you just used. There's a lot of redundancy in in, in devices, especially yeah. in vaping. There was a couple of years back. There was a huge boom in you know stuff like the IOTS, the heat not burn, that kind of stuff. People trying different things in order to get around certain certain things, right? But that that that's huge is that you cannot write a piece of legislation today and expect it to hold up two years from now. You can't. Yep. Especially if you want to get in, into specifics. You know what I mean? I mean you that's why we see these blanket uh bans, these blanket statements that just that decimate what we're trying to accomplish because yeah. it's just too difficult for them to understand the speed in which this industry is moving. Because we're a young industry, we are. I don't care if, if you've been vaping since you know 2008 or whatever. That's not very long, in the grand scheme of of, of industries or life or anything, really. You know what I mean? So that's that, that's a great point. Yeah. This, you know, you um, just, sorry, Adam. I was just going to say, what you do is you uh, write the legislation like uh, the uh, current health minister in my state. That makes it so great that anything he dictates or this person dictates can be put into that situation. It that's becomes, a really uh, good I'm, I'm insight. King, I'm king of nicotine. Yeah, that's a that really a good insight. Yeah. 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 Um, legislation should not be so vague that somebody in power can say, well, I'm going to say it means this, and therefore yeah. it means that. Mm. Right. Well, we had that discussion recently, like, you know, there, there are the people who just want a device, you know, like this, where they don't have to think, or well, then there's me who wants to rebuild, you know, so if I go down to a beauty store on my corner, which is right, you know, 100 meters on the street, and I buy cotton from them, which is meant for someone cleaning someone's face, you know, effectively, I, you know, they're retailing it to me, can, you know, the, the powers that be walk in and say, well, actually, no, that's now a vaping you know, a product for vaping. So uh, mm. th- ha- what is and what isn't? Like, I get it, you know, but it's that's so far beyond vague. It's it's like, well, we don't know. So we're just going to say this and we'll just make it up as we go along. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's all about uh, control and, you know, especially control. I mean, there's I think there's a lot of class, classism and um, oppression of Absolutely. other classes in this, you know. So we have to be aware of that. We have to be aware of how this particular topic is being exploited by uh, groups uh, for other means, you know, whether it's in, in New Zealand, obviously Māori smoking rates are oh, about 38% of Māori women smoke compared to only about 12% of white New Zealand women. So there's wow. a huge racial wow. difference in our That's smoking huge. prevalence. Very. Yeah. And, um, you know, in New Zealand, you're like, racism is a no, no, you're not allowed to, oh no, we're not racist. But, you know, if you have people who are racist, well then there's other ways. There's more than one way to deny somebody access to property or a job or, yeah. you know. Can I, can I add, I mean, obviously you're, 
reversed on it. How large is the, the actual Maori population? And, and is it a population that's spread throughout the country? Or is yeah. it a regional thing like, like you know, we have here with our American Indians, they have, unfortunately, you know, they've been segregated quite a lot. And it's, it's a real sad situation. And I know me and Adam spoke about the original people and, and, and how, I mean, they kind of segregate themselves to, to the more desolate kind of areas. But the Maori, I don't know that much about them other than a movie that I saw that I thought I think is amazing, but I'm not going really, I mean, to <laughs> but you said you were going to do it, man. You said I you were going to do it. I just, I yeah. just, I'm so fascinated by the Maori people. I am. I'm sorry. I love the, the, the hot dog yeah. and all that stuff. I mean, it's rad. Right. There was, we are f about 15% of the population and uh, spread throughout the country. So our tribes were, you know, right across the country. So, you know, we, we've kind of got it all divided up. So, yep, we're everywhere. Uh, the I think one of the advantages, if it's an advantage, it's never an advantage to be colonised, but uh, at least we had a treaty and the treaty between the, some of the Māori tribes and the uh, Queen of England and the, the, so the Crown. So that's one of the founding documents and we're still sort of, at least we have that, we can say, hey, got, the treaty is, like, hey, yeah, it's being breached, it's being breached, you know, what right. about this inequity? Um, and it, in tobacco control, for example, just to sort of pin it down, the yeah. smoking prevalence rates among Māori have always been higher. And one of the reasons why was that when tobacco was introduced to New Zealand in the late 1700s, early 1800s, Māori men and Māori women took up smoking. Whereas in Europe, European women didn't take up smoking until the roaring 30s. It was very taboo. 20s, 30s, yeah. Well, it became a luxury. So yeah. to yeah. show your show your wealth. Yeah. Yeah, and no, also after World War One and women had had to work the, and the, they'd the had to the suffrage movement and then yeah. they got the vote yeah. and then it was like, hey man, we're, we're gonna do yeah. I guess you can smoke, smoke too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you you know, what? You're not. Though, you're yeah. not coming and hanging out with us and having a brandy and a cigar. Don't even think about it. Yeah. Yeah. And you need a jacket. You need a jacket yeah. as well. Yeah. No jacket for you. Yeah. That's right. So unfortunately for Māori women, we, you know, our women have been smoking almost a hundred years longer. That's, a, that's amazing. And um wow. and so. What are the cancer and, rates among among? Oh yeah. Yeah, Māori woman, there was uh, in the 19, I can't remember what year it was, 2007, um, at one of the conferences, someone, you know, a European person was on stage and, you know, and they, they used us and they said, oh, Māori women have the highest rate of lung cancer in the world. Wow. And, um, wow. yeah, and in the, world. in the world, that was back in 2007. Yeah. And it's because our women started so much you know, earlier. And so there's kind of a trajectory when tobacco gets hold, and, and I'm talking about the commercialized, you know, mass produced cigarettes, when that gets a hold yeah. in a country, and then smoking prevalence goes up and up and up and up, at some point it peaks and begins to come down. So there's kind of this natural life cycle. And ours yeah. was earlier, ours was earlier. And that's and, the thing, that when it's that, when it's been there, it's in great into the culture you know in yep. a way that, that it's not necessarily even now for it's i mean well now smoking here is very kind of it's gone back to being taboo for everyone which yeah. is a thing and i love it if you see somebody smoking you're like what the fuck is wrong with that guy but like <laughs> as i mean as you're saying though as as a maori i mean it's it, it's been part of the people for for worse not better or worse but for worse but i mean it's just something that that makes it even harder to to, to break free from yeah, oh, but imagine, but yeah, you know, but don't do anything different to reduce smoking rates among <laughs> exactly. Māori. You know, they like just yeah. do the same thing that you're doing to reduce smoking among the European population. Um, yeah. You know, because it's, it's one same. law for all. You know, like we're all the same. <laughs> yeah. You know? So I've always argued that there should be there was this huge inequity, and priority should have gone to bringing our rates down to at least the same and then bring them all down. But it's always been, mm. oh no, 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 we'll go for equal 
outcomes. So if we drop by 10%, we want you to drop by 10%. And if we drop, you know, it's like, you know, we're still, we're still like 20% higher. Let's do yeah. something about that. And that's reparative action, you know, but yeah. no, nah, oh, yeah. but we don't get that. Um, yeah. Question, how receptive uh, are the, am I pronouncing it right, Maori? Maori? Maori. Maori. Yep. Ma yeah. Indigenous, say indigenous people. Yeah, <laughs> that's easier for me. I got it. Uh, so how, how receptive are the indigenous New Zealand peoples? Uh, uh, how receptive are they to vaping over smoking? Oh, yeah. Uh, luckily, uh, because we have higher smoking rates, you know, proportionally higher smoking rates anyway. So there were a lot of Māori smokers who cottoned on to vaping early. Oh, and no. so it's more, uh, there've been a lot of Māori who have been leaders here, vapors. Um, awesome. Beautiful. Uh, Moxley and um, Megan, they run a radio program and that's been around for quite some time now. Um, what are they? I'm sorry, I'm forgetting their na the name of their radio program. But, and then QJ, he began a manufacturing company, him and his brother. And they began making e-liquids. And Ooh. so, and nice. they are Māori. And yeah, it's, it's, That's right. there's been a lot of Māori switch to vaping. And then because of our more whānau centred, uh, well, not everywhere, we're very diverse, but, mm. but traditionally we were very Māori uh, family centred. And so if one person starts vaping and then they share that with, the, the there are other, yeah. And so yeah. I think that the spread has been a lot faster because we're more family centered and community centered. Yeah. All right. So Paul, it's the, Om, the Om Kiwis? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank Paul. you. Lab works. Nice job, Paul. The vaping pirates for the win. Where, yeah. Where you go, brother. <laughs> so, so can I? I good. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, you guys. Go, you go. I was just going to be a quick thing. You know, it, it's that's 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 amazing to hear. I mean, that's fantastic to hear that that that, that the, the indigenous Maoris are um, <laughs> actually into that because, as as Adam is, has has brought up before, it's it's a very opposite thing with the Aboriginal people that they they are not interested in vaping at all. Oh no no that's not no that's, oh, that's not, not right. true no that's not oh, true. I said I yeah. told you. Yeah, no. That, when that, when that, did I say that? <laughs> I said you said your mom worked with them, and they like weren't into it. They just like don't want to do you know, anything that. Yeah, that no, way. that's that's definitely not true. Um, but <laughs> certainly, you know, tobacco control in Australia is um, is very controlled, and it's yeah. very controlled by uh, the white Australian people in tobacco control yeah. and they would have everybody believe that aboriginal people are not into vaping but that isn't oh, true yeah, at all there are a lot of aboriginal people vape um they might not go around sort of shouting it from the rooftops i mean they have a huge well lots of huge issues to deal with black deaths in custody huge suicide okay. rates um you mm. don't see them out there doing a lot of advocacy work for vaping because they're busy trying to, you know, stop their kids from right. committing suicide. There's, yeah. yeah. And yeah. they're busy trying to keep their people out of jail where, you know, they might not survive that. So, uh, yeah. no, they're definitely vaping there. And oh, I've even read I'll, surveys, I'll yeah, among Native American people. There was a survey, um, you know, so Native American people in America are vaping, vaping's everywhere, except we're not in Fiji. <laughs> it's not in Fiji. Yeah. There's there's definitely yeah. groups that are not and not very much in interior India. There's definitely groups that are not um, getting access yet. Yeah. Yeah. India yeah, that, they're I mean, still uh, yeah access. cracking down pretty hard on it from what I understand. Yeah. I read yeah. a little bit online of what's going on. Is it the AVI? Uh, the yeah. AVI? I mean, you know, some change is happening, right? Uh, you know, it's getting there. Yeah. And I think one of the advantages they have is that 
if it's an advantage, but it's sort of happening state by state. So some states are not going to ban vaping and then other states, and it really depends on that mix of um, yeah. ignorance and uh, yeah, how, how much ignorance and how much of that prohibitionist Western Eurocentric views got in there and you know, manipulated yeah. them. But again, uh, you know, a, a ginormous population that even if, you know, 5%, you know, 10% uh, were, were achieved, you know, change, uh, doing a switch or, you know, abstaining from, from combustibles completely like that, would, you know, I don't want to say the, the toll, you know, but it's a ginormous amount of people, yeah. Huge, but only 11% of Indians actually smoke. So oh, a right. lot of them, yeah, a lot of them have already, uh, or they never smoked, they just chewed. A lot of them have switched to of, chewing. Yeah. A lot of yeah. Uh, a lot of death. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and chewing is safer than smoking. It's smoke. It's safer. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. And then if you oh, accidentally luck, drink out of that cup, it's a oh, low rock. Your life, your so life is no, I'm ended. Not, I'm not that story. Yeah. That happened to me, by the way, in, a, in class in high school. And it, it was a bad day in high school. <laughs> so that's all I'm going to say. That's it. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, well, anyway, uh, we'll feature that know, we'll, story we'll, on the next episode. Yeah, next yeah. One, yeah. No, please, we'll please don't. <laughs> we'll start with that one. <laughs> That'll be the uh, feature. Anyway, we appreciate all your time. And if you've got time, we'd love to keep talking to you, but I wanted to be conscious of, of your time. Uh, oh, absolutely. We, we, fast. Yeah, it has gone fast. Uh, perhaps you could uh, tell us about your latest uh, editorial appointment that I saw in the last couple of days. Oh, the Harm Reduction Journal. Yeah, the Harm Reduction Journal has been around for a long time and uh, it, it's been mainly, you know, publishing papers on drug harm reduction and just the, yeah, all, all of that area. And in recent years, they've just noticed an increase in submissions that are specifically about tobacco harm reduction. So uh, they, they have section editors for all of the different other topics that they've always published on, and they needed a section editor for tobacco control. Um, interestingly, you know, they did they did ask a lot of people before me. I don't mind being way down the list, um, but it was interesting. Well, why, yeah. Why is that? Yeah, well, is... a lot of people are really busy. So obviously you always get people, oh, no, I couldn't possibly do another thing. But one of the reasons, too, was that... Uh, it's it was too mm, people wanted to avoid the for well, having their name to yeah having their, their name to oh yeah yeah, the, yeah. well not to, to back not to the harm reduction journal but to the flack that they could get if they publish certain journal articles mm -hmm, so right. um for example that, harm, that, that's forever yeah so harm reduction journal they don't discriminate against, um, you know, it's based on science. You put a paper in and it's reviewed on the science of it and the rigor and how good it is and how well That's it's written. Mm. Now, there are some journals like Tobacco Control Journal and they won't take articles from, for example, tobacco company researchers. Harm Reduction Journal will. And so there's a whole lot of people in Tobacco Control. Oh no, they don't wanna, they don't wanna edit they don't want to edit a tobacco company article mm -hmm. or, or they won't have oh, yeah. anything to do with even a paper written by a researcher that works for a tobacco company. Mm -hmm. um, God, they're going to catch this virus and then next thing, you know, they'll be pro vaping or something. Right. You know, right. Just, it's yeah, yeah. Look oh, You've got the vape. You've got <laughs> the airborne. Vape. Oh my God. It's an airborne <laughs> epidemic. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, um, I don't, I don't vape. I have tried it without nicotine, so I can un try to understand what it's like. But um, yeah, awesome. those of us, yeah, those of us that are seen as pro vaping advocates, you know, academics and researchers, we kind of become proxy vapors, and so all of the <laughs> crap thrown at you vapors. Um, we get <laughs> we get a little bit a little of splatters. it. Wow. Yeah, we, yeah, we get splattered. That's right. We get splattered. associated by default. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, you know, there's there's quite a bit of splatter for some of us. Um, but, no doubt, no doubt. You know, I mean, and we appreciate I, you for it. <laughs> it it's hard. 
you know, it's hard. People are really, some people, it, it's just disgusting behavior what's going on. But, yeah, you know, I when I wake up in the morning and, um, and I thought, well, this isn't about me. This is about you guys. This is about people out there that smoke, that yeah. need to be, have the equal opportunity, need to have an opportunity to try a risk-reduced product, to move to a risk-reduced product. And then that might reduce uh, they might not get a disease that's related to smoking or tobacco use. They might not die 12, up to 12, 13 years earlier. That's yeah. what it's about for me. And um, yeah, they, they, they can keep, they will keep my back. Is like, there's all these holes and knife marks. And <laughs> it's, uh, hey, I got a couple of them. <laughs> yeah, I, I I can easily say I think you've probably got over a hundred thousand supporters worldwide who will stand in front of the, of that. I will take a vote for 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 second. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right now. Uh, okay. <laughs> I well, I think to point you, out, you, uh, yeah. Uh, a comment from the chat here. Glenn Hefner said, "Thank yeah. you for having Dr. Glover on, and thank you, Dr. Glover, for all of the valuable insight." I don't usually take notes, but I think this stream is like the most valuable lecture of the decade. Oh, there you go. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, so. you know, I think um, what's really, really important, vapors, you guys totally outnumber, you, you so swamp tobacco control, you swamp the number of health professionals globally who are trying oh, no to help people stop smoking. There are way more of you than there's ever been of us. And so to me, um, you know, you as a group, uh, you need more information. Anything we can do, any of us, Ricardo, um, Constantinos, any of us, uh, I think if you need information, if you need to understand what's going on, you know, we're here for you because you are the ones now that are helping more people stop smoking than all of the health services ever, ever have. So, yeah, always here for you to explain anything or give you those insights that help you um, and keep you going. And, you know, because there's huge churn in your you know community as well a lot of people get burnt out and um, and yeah. we need more vapors coming in and picking up that that fight um and that's the thing man i can tell i can tell you from experience that that it, it is a, a a difficult thing when um there's so there's so many people that are that are that are like yeah man let's let's do this let's advocate let's let's, let's talk about this let's, but it's a real lonely thing at a flavor band here for us yeah yeah you know what i mean when, when i show up to 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 an actual we're gonna talk to a politician face-to-face -face meeting it's lonely man <laughs> and and it ain't lonely for the other side they, they're they're bussing in people yeah you know and that's the mentality that we need to start taking you know, it's, it's, it's fantastic to, to be on Instagram and Twitter and, 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 and engaging and engaging and engaging and engaging, but at some point we're going to have to engage in person, you know? Mm. Yeah. It's, it, it, you know, it is, but yeah. I mean, it, 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 that... yep. It's, um, it's a real, um, you know, this is a social justice movement. This is what it's about. It's social justice and what's yeah. happening to people who smoke, um, being denied the opportunity to switch to a risk reduced product and people who have switched and, and people trying to rip that out of their hands. Um, Absolutely. That's this the is an injustice and that's all there is to it. And I think that there are probably a lot of other people out there, academics, you know, uh, advocates who work in those other areas, who work on other social justice issues. And, you know, they, they probably, oh, no. I hope, would help if they knew, if they just knew. Yeah. No, I agree. What happened? Are we frozen? Am I frozen? No. 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 Oh, so is it just me and you? Are they frozen? Oh, no. good. Oh, are they? Got them out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk. 
Yeah, I, I just Kevin saw them. Fun thing. That's right. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> no, we Adam, thought you were Adam was. Adam was frozen. Oh, was he? Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was yeah. like, but you got it, it, okay. So I don't know if you've seen our shows, but like the guy with the horns, he enjoys like just sitting there, like. <laughs> <laughs> and, and every time I'm like, is, yeah. he fro is he frozen? What's going on? And he goes like, ah. <laughs> Can't be doing that. So. Yeah, you, you've got to keep your spirits up. And... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. Been, uh, that's, that's my uh, hidden talent, number 23. It's a good one, too. He's good. He's a good one. But no, yeah. you know, and, and this this has been amazing. And, and I, I've done or anything, but I, I, I also feel like even with like the, the level of, of content that we're talking about, it's been fun. It's been engaging. You know, this stuff doesn't have to be dry, man. You know, and and yeah. I and I credit I credit uh, Dr. Clover with that. I mean, she's she's been amazing. Uh, I'm I'm just happy. I'm just a happy guy right now. I'm sorry. I'll I'll stop talking. Have I stopped talking? I'm, I'm still talking. <laughs> Am I, still I think you know this is everyday stuff. <laughs> Every, you know, this yeah. is everyday stuff oh, yeah. that is especially people who smoke, especially people who vape, especially people in lower socioeconomic communities or oppressed and marginalized communities. They know this stuff. They know what it's like to get stabbed in the back. They know that somebody's trying to do them out of this or do them out of that. So, you know, I, th I think that's another reason why so many vapors uh, have got involved, have got incensed and are fighting because it's like, this is just basic human crap Liberty. You know? yeah yeah it yeah. is it's basic human people trying to like no we want that all for impose ourselves their will. yeah, yeah impose it's, it's their the will on power us. trying to impose their will on the people without power it's been the same thing throughout exactly. history but especially exactly. now in america we're, we're such a, like a, a a liberty nation like like don't take this from me this is america and all of a yeah. sudden it's like shit's getting taken and we can't do that about it. all of a sudden what, what happened what happened to that before way before vaping it's yeah, just oh, now yeah. with thankfully with the internet right you know uh the internet and the way knowledge can be spread so much better now and you can actually uh you know do research yourself and find these sources and sift through the bs Absolutely. and and find yeah. the real the real stuff right um you know it, it's it's all because of that you know but yeah. this has been going on for w much longer oh, than absolutely. just vaping. This has been going on for since ever. probably the beginning of time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, back yeah, to the kings and yeah. queens, you know? There, so there was, um, last week in India, I was in Madurai and there's a really old temple that was, some of it was built in the 12, 1200s and some of it was built in 1500s. And our guide was explaining one of the statues to us, which um, I'm not sure that I can remember the right name, um, Shiva. And in, anyway, he was explaining the meaning. So it was a mm. dancing Shiva. Yes, Shiva. Yeah. Nataraja, Nataraja or Raja. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so he started explaining that Shiva was standing on uh, a demon and that represented ignorance. And then oh. the, the left arm comes over the front and is shaped like an elephant trunk. And that's to push away at the barriers and the challenges um, to the truth. And he just kept going and that's explaining amazing. this bit and that yeah. bit. And I was like, Wow, this is, this is, I said to Atakan Befritz from Sweden, this, he's a snus expert, I was like, yeah, this no. is what we're up against, this is what's happening, this yeah. fighting, this ignorance, um, and did fighting they, for the truth, and did, did, fighting. Did they explain the serpent? This, you, you explain it, you know? Some of the, well, some of the Shiva statues have a serpent, and it's like, um, a lot of ancient cultures have, you know, they're a, a serpent incorporated on it and still some people don't know, but I wanted to, <clears throat> I wanted to see if he took a stab at explaining 
uh, the serpent that's incorporated to some of those uh, statues of their gods and goddesses. No, there were there were a lot of aspects to it, but there I was standing in this temple from the 1500s, and he could have been describing what we're all going through, fighting for people's right to switch from no matter, combustible cigarettes. No matter how to, much changes, everything's the same. Exactly, yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. The ignorance, yeah. fighting for the truth, fighting for yeah. people to have the right to make that choice for themselves. And um, yeah, so that was like, that's good. It's good to be reminded. And that's yeah. why I think so many people who have taken up vaping and then find that people are still still like doing the windmill arms and, <laughs> you know and the, uh, yeah you know no. and the cough cough as they walk past and the dirty looks <laughs> oh, no. and going for the oh no we want to ban that no. um oh, oh, oh smell don't, like don't, a delicious bakery yeah 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 <laughs> that's fantastic i smell great Is that <laughs> it's, you, you know cookies. That's right, you know, lots, lots of vapors. But no one ever. Yeah. Right, exactly. Lots of vapors have finally, look, I've done what you wanted. Where's yeah. my bouquet of flowers? Do I get to come right. in now? Do no. I, right. do, yes. do I, can I have a job now? Can I rent yeah. the house Or can now? I, can and I cuddle like, your mm, child? Yeah. yeah, nah, yeah. nah, yeah. it doesn't matter what you do know. actually, because it was you we didn't like. And then they go, uh-huh. And so I, I yeah. yeah. No, I get it. I think yeah. I think people people are you know we forget about how persistent people can be, and I know this can be taken on either side of the argument. But even what you were saying, and you know, like a family member, you know, you you found something, and then you're introducing it to another family member who doesn't have the same opinion of you, and then you know you will go against your own family member to you know help guide them or help show them information so they can make a decision for you. For themselves even as uncomfortable as that is you know so people are very persistent so as long as uh, the the truth <laughs> the truth comes yeah. out you know that's and the most important persistent thing persistent about the truth yes so yeah that it's going to hurt it's going to hurt i mean this is probably <laughs> why we continue to do, you know uh, we do these shows so we can talk about that so people can make an informed decision uh, of their own you know so yeah it's not an easy not an easy road yeah, yeah. And I think that with more knowledge and uh, insight, you know, more people will be able to help with that advocacy and speaking up. The politicians need to hear from vapors. You're the most powerful uh, form of advocacy that can happen. And even if you get, you know, Twitter blocked or they won't see you, you've just got to keep trying um, because yeah. at the end of the day, your story is what is going to change it and that's what's happened here in New Zealand it's the stories of people who have quit smoking finally finally after everything else after so many years they yeah. no longer smoke and and some of them no longer vape you know what yep. what yeah what that other you know the anti vaping group yeah yeah they they, <laughs> they don't see that this for some people this is a step and yep. Mm -hmm. You know, they just want to pull the steps That's away. The thing, man. You, you build enough anecdotes and it, and it becomes a fact. Well, you know? I would say they want you to follow their steps. Yes, true. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 yeah I mean, and so that, you, you kind of have to in order to, to, to win because because the game is played by their rules. And if, if and you don't and if you don't do it in a certain way, you're not going to win, regardless of whether you're right or wrong. That doesn't matter. What matters is that you 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 follow the, the rules that they set forth and you beat them at the bullshit game. I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to swear, but that's what I do. I'm sorry. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but I mean, yeah. <laughs> that brings the cuss count up to three so far. I've been keeping track. Hey, that's <laughs> the lowest. I so three. I <laughs> okay. Yeah. You didn't. You didn't, <laughs> you didn't count my craps. Crap, no, no, no. you're you're two of them. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, she's got two. I'm just one. So you're in the, you, got, you and Chuck are tied at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 basically, you know, you, is what you're saying, Doctor Glover, is that you know what people can do, even when you know the the the, the road seems very long and the hill is like really high, is still just contacting 
you know, their authorities or health professionals or the politicians, you know, like continue to, com- to keep yeah. doing that, keep telling their story. What is your, yeah. what is your perfect path? for the average individual vapor that isn't necessarily super dialed in what what is their best roadmap towards affecting change on a on an individual level uh talk to your doctor so make sure that your doctor knows you have stopped smoking you are vaping uh and because when you see your doctor that your doctor's going to see positive changes in your health most likely you know, I mean, if you already had smoking related diseases um, before you quit, you know, then you're going to have an ongoing issue dealing with those. But one of the things that that nobody seems to take into account is that your body is always healing and there's you're always healing. It's not like a permanent effect. Um, so what we, you know, what I've always said to people is, and I think it goes something like after 15 years, as long as you quit before, say, cancer or a smoking related illness is set in uh, or started, after 15 years of not smoking, you can expect to live as long as a never smoker. So yeah. even though I smoked when I was young, I can expect to live a normal, you know, the average longevity for Māori women. With, with your body. Yeah. Kind of yeah. getting itself back in sync, getting all that toxic yeah. out of it. A, a regeneration of such. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it is a regeneration and you can help that by, you know, exercising and good diet or whatever, you know. You continue all the <laughs> or, or pick up something else. Well, yeah. So well, no, uh, I, have, I, think I have a good example of that. My father, he had COPD. He smoked for 50 years. I got him on vaping and within three years, I mean, it's not on, but I mean, he went from not being able to take out the trash to walking around the block 50 times if he wants to. Fantastic. You know I mean? And it, yeah. you know, and it's yeah. stuff like that, that, and you know, much as people ask me that question a lot too, that, that, that you just asked. And I never thought like, oh, talk to your doctor. That's such a great answer. God, yeah, that's fantastic. Exactly. Yeah, talk to your doctor. I, I, the thought never occurred to me because the doctor is like such kind of like a, not our friend kind of thing. And I'm kind of like an, an adversarial kind of well, intellect. Okay. Well, they feel like, <laughs> so like that's Maybe. their profession, so they know better, right? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And whatever research they've come across, they know they know what's best for you. But unquote. but in the in the same vein, uh, I told a doctor that I was seeing that I had started vaping and it had been six months. They instantly relayed some information from the WHO. But in the same vein, <laughs> when I go back in six months' time. Like I don't have any, you know, I don't have uh, any, well, not that I know of any, any, you know, illnesses from my 23 years of smoking, but in the same vein, if you go back and you're in better shape than what you were, how can they ignore that? You know, that's, that's right. Uh, they'll, they'll, they'll play it off. Oh, you must have a better diet. You've been exercising. Right? Yeah, no, yeah. I, I just started vaping. <laughs> They're like, no, 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 no. But you started taking the stairs. No, I've just been <laughs> eating. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but you know, so <laughs> but if a doctor sees a number of their patients yeah, and yeah. a number of them are saying that yeah. they've switched to it and they're starting to see improvement across a number, then there's only so long that they will that they're going to have to start going, there is something here. And yeah. all of this other research, you know, you're gonna to have to yeah. look at it. Nurses as well, nurses are even better than doctors. Um, you know, that we oh, see yeah, we see yeah, yeah, we see um, not always higher, can be. higher percentages. <laughs> yeah, higher percentages of support among nurses, and I think that's probably because you know compassion is a really big thing for them. Yeah. And so, talk to your doctor, talk to your nurse, talk to your family, help them understand if they're open enough to, and keep doing what you're doing. Keep helping uh, other smokers if they want to try it you know that just the usual thing that the vaping community does here have a go here i've i'm not using this one anymore you can have it you know the whole vape it forward um just keep doing that and and then keep opening vape shops and and keep you know selling and keep your shows going and keep the industry alive and and do it in a a responsible way please yeah the other thing i i think (laughs) The other thing I I think you should, um, you know, there needs to be more art 
Um, I'm starting oh, to see beautiful. in the movies, you know, the, there were a few little. Yeah. Yeah. And now what you, what I'm starting to see is uh, they're using vaping and to characterize the the evil character again, like they used to do with smoking. So, yeah, yeah. you know, we need to see vaping in a positive light. We need positive stories out there, um, art that That's celebrates. Mm. You see, you see Aaron, the, Bond, Aaron the Bond villain now is like this. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure that Aaron, <laughs> you know, David, Aaron David like is this. doing the next <laughs> X-Men anyway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> I did some. I did see somebody using a smoke tank though in some recent show or movie. I can't remember what really? it was now, but yeah, I was like, television? that is definitely a baby beast tank for sure. <laughs> <laughs> there's no, there's no. You, you know yeah. it's leaking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're like, they're like, <laughs> it's leaking all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be in my trailer. Yeah. <laughs> I just put this new coil in. <laughs> and you got a whole three ml of juice to thank you for it. I know, right? Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Uh, Good Amazing. Uh, Dr. Glover, we need to say thank you so, so very much uh, for, for your time and for your amazing, amazing insight. Uh, uh, you are an amazing human and thank you for all you do. Oh, thank you. It's, it was great meeting you guys and, and talking and, um, you know, keep up the good work. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so for people in the, in, in the chat, you can find uh, Dr. Glover on Twitter. Uh, what's your handle? I, uh, oh, no, uh, I posted, yeah. I posted yeah, I all posted the links, links to, to, the, to some of the articles, right? Yeah. yeah. Cor the chorus, uh, dot com. Probably not pronouncing that right, but either way, uh, Twitter and the filter mag. Oh yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah, I've got um, I've got some blogs on vape beat as well. Vape beat. So, vape, beat. Okay. vape beat. Yeah. There's yeah, some. The chat, wrenches. Yeah, the vape beat are, are ones where I'm talking more to vapors, you know, oh, about the issues no, that you're grappling with. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Awesome. Oh, well, there's, there's three subjects here who would love to take part in that if you ever need it. Uh. <laughs> yeah. uh, right. it was a gratuitous plug, sorry. Gratuitous <laughs> plug. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's very yeah. okay. Awesome. All right, well. I posted that and then I'll try to, I'll try to remember to post it uh, in, yeah, the in the description, description after I make it live. Put all those awesome. There. Great. Well, thank well, you very much. Thank you so much. I mean, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Honestly, we, we thank you. Know. You know, it's funny when, and, and this is this all credit goes to Adam because, you know, he's, he's just crazy enough to be like, Hey, I'll email her. <laughs> we were talking about yeah, like, dude, there's no, there's just no way. There's no way. Right? Come on. She's like, not going to come. A person with a PhD. <laughs> but willingly he was like, no, she's on the show. Super I asked super polite nice. Nice. She's into it. And we're like, I, I, I asked politely. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> we send, no. We send our phone. Yeah, no, out. look, there's just, um, there's hundreds of us that would love to, anything we can do to help, honestly. Don't ever hesitate to contact any of the pro-vaping academics around the world and doctors and professors. Um, you know, academics, it's a service role. You know, we're, yeah. we're servants of, we're supposed to be, huh? <laughs> uh, beautiful thought but man that's lost on a lot of them <laughs> for sure yeah no, right. so go wanted, for it i want to thank everyone and chat for showing up and Absolutely. sticking with us we appreciate it dr glover of course that's appreciate right. you as well and uh i think that's where we'll end it today um we didn't do a buffet, but guess what? We don't have to every time because you know what we're doing? We're vaping on something better than cigarettes. So that's the point. And thank you, everyone, and have an awesome week. Thank you, Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.